Um, yeah. there we go. Sorry. Uh, greetings, all Shard Vixen here, and today is uh, Saturday, the April 14th. Uh, it's the day before Easter for those who celebrate Easter here in the United States. Not to say they don't celebrate Easter other places, I'm just saying that today is Saturday here in the United States. Uh, it's in the afternoon, so if you hear any sounds other than me talking, um, it's my neighbors in the back are getting ready for their Easter egg hunt. Um, we will be doing one in the morning in the front yard uh, for the poor blue boy. We took him to a paid one today. I was unimpressed. Uh, if they get too loud, though, I may have to stop this and go put up the thing. I'm thinking I need a new fox's mask, a new max mask, max, mask, 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 all dressed in black, 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 with silver buttons, 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 all down her back, back, back. Okay, sorry, jump rope song. From my past, uh, lots of them. Loved to jump rope when I was a kid. I, in fact, um, let's see, my son is 13, will be 13. So when he was four in 2008, I went on a, um, went back, well, I did a new diet and I was on it for a year and a half and lot, I went down to 170 pounds, which may not seem like a lot, but I was like two something when I gained weight with him. So the sadness is, is that probably because of my medication, but there's no guarantee of that though. Um, it is a side effect. I am now almost 230 pounds. I, I fluctuate between two 25 and 230 and the sad thing is is that um when I had my daughter uh I when I gave birth to my daughter I was 240 I went from 140 pounds I was 27 years old well I wasn't yet 27 because she was born right before my birthday um she who shall not be named uh and I uh was 240 when I gave birth and then it I I kind of always hovered somewhere around 170 and then I slowly over time gained weight because I um did less and I was about so depression usually make me eat more it's always funny the type of things that you remember like chimp roping songs and Skip to my loo, which you can only remember. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo. <laughs> Two things that we weren't talking. This is Rambling 101, and this is where I just talk. I just talk about stuff. Um, I'm thinking that down the road, one of the series on my blog of series within a series will be something like some kind of breaking news, and I will talk about things that have happened through the week. I don't want to be a news channel, so that isn't it. It's my commentary on the world around us. But I have to say, I have this conspiracy theory going on. And you can laugh, and you can, you know, troll it, and you can do whatever you want, but um, my conspiracy theory is that uh, our great and wonderful leader, which I will not say his name, of the United States, is working in cooperation with the Russians. Now, I'm not going to say that they're working for the downfall of the United States and going to turn everybody into Russian communists. That's not what I'm talking about. What I believe is going to happen, and again, this is conspiracy theory, which I'm sure will show up in some story I will write sometime because that's usually how these things work. And conspiracy theories, for me, conspiracy theories for me, are like faith in religion. You believe it to be true, or even faith in science. When you know that something probably isn't true, or actually the rest of the world believes it isn't true, and you believe it. An example of that would be the flat earth, earthers. The people who believe we live on a flat earth. A not, uh, forever going on flat earth. I'm not really sure about a flat earth, because I'm not sure how that works in the long term of things, so maybe I'll look it up, because... If we live on a flat earth, at some point would we not come to an edge? I guess I suppose it could be an infinite edge, um, but it doesn't quite make sense. So if you get to the end of the world, right, so uh, you walk from or drive or ship or fly through one end of the uh, thing to the other end, at some point in time, it, I guess, would seem like a circle, which is what they're saying, but it is really flat, and you will what? fall off the earth because nobody's fallen off the earth and they've all been able to fly so 
is there a starting point or an ending point? So I don't understand the concept. I'm going to have to look it up before I start making any type of weirdness towards it. I don't really make fun of those things. So turn out right. And yes, I now have blue poodle hair. Though the poodle part of it won't stay because my hair isn't naturally like that. I have to, I braid my hair when it's wet and pull it back. All right, so my conspiracy theory. And I hope I don't wiggle and knock the camera because I got it a little better than it was. Is that he, wa he is working in cahoots with the Russian, Russian leader to create a world power that will be ran by three world people. China, Russia, and the United States. And they will govern everything. I don't think it's going to work, but I just that's my conspiracy theory. And so his bombing, which was not okay, um, because he didn't ask us first if we wanted him to go bombing him. Though I don't know that justifies the means, and I don't know how you guys feel about it. Um, I believe that there is a point in which a push comes to a push, and then you have to fight, and that's the way it is. And sometimes you don't want to wait too long for that push. You kind of want to jump the gun. I mean, strategically, strategically speaking, you might not, like in uh, World War II, where they waited until Pearl Harbor was bombed before they try, decided to intervene. Um, and our great... And, and our great leader, I can't call him anything else because I'm not, I didn't like him and I didn't vote for him. But, um, whoever is aiding him and talking to him, I mean, the whispers are that it's his daughter, um, doing certain things probably isn't as smart as other things. Um, he is a savvy person when it comes to understanding how power and control works, but I'm not sure that he actually understands people. He kind of gets what people want or wish but it's in a stereotypical concept so like that's this whole bunch of people want it rather than what really really people want you know like um anyhow so that's my conspiracy theory um but but Sean Fixin he just bombed okay yes so he bombed that and I think it was a ruse I think it was a way to get everybody to stop saying oh he's in the pocket of the Russians therefore he must be like in cahoots with them because now he's not because he just bombed them and they're all I think that um there's a story behind that as in all stories and maybe it is and this is just a story I don't I can't add the theory because it does you know it would make sense but there's a lot of holes when you think about conspiracy theories the thing about conspiracy theory is that there's a possibility it could be true but in most likelihood it probably isn't but there is that small percentage in which it is. And and only by going further into the future do we really know that to be true when we look in the past. And again, there's things that people will hide from you so you don't really know anyway because they never want you to know until way, way, way in the future and everybody's dead. And then there's nobody to make an uproar about it. So as far as the bombing of uh, Syria goes, I think that it's one of those cases of where... Um, I'm going to liken it to behaviorism in children, in which I, that's how I look at everything. And it's not just children, but in human beings by nature. It's just that once you're an adult, your, brain, your brain's pretty baked, and you're not, you're not really into being modified. But if you wait too long, if you have a child who has problems early on in age, and you wait too long to help modify those problems, either by modifying the outside world so that that child is having an easier time or helping the child to modify their behavior if you wait too long eventually you have an adult who is mismanageable most of them sit in prison or kill themselves or are drug addicts because at some point in time they had no coping skills well i look at that as the same way as a big giant country so you have this country in which they allowed these people and yes they were fighting i get that but it, we kind of we as a world power I'm saying as the United States or Russia, Russia was their, hey, yeah, here, have more candy, it's good for you, um, kind of thing, is that if you wait too long to disrupt the power flow as it goes, then at some point you have to do this big thing rather than this small thing. And why use the mother of all bombs? I mean, it was a statement, that's all it is. I think it was a statement towards Korea. I don't think it was a statement towards Syria. I don't even, I think that... 
Russia probably wanted Syria out of the way and asked, you know, their best friend to uh, bomb them. Anyway, that's my conspiracy theory, and that's enough on that particular activity. You can ask me questions. I will talk to you about it. It's just a conspiracy theory. Um, I, and in the end conspiracy theory, that opens up for debate. So people can can say, well, no, no, this is that's not how it is, and here's why it's not that way. I'm, I'm totally open to that. I got no problem with it because it's just a conspiracy theory. Um, let's see, what else? So anyway, I was thinking I could do breaking news kind of thing, and I could pick out news points throughout the week. And I write about them. I could talk about them because I can't really talk. I don't really talk about them like that. And I don't have open vlogs yet. At some point in time, I was thinking I might like to do a weekly vlog. I've seen those. Those are kind of neat where you take a little bit from each of your day, a highlight, and put it in. The problem is, is whereas I do some great things with my kids and stuff, I don't necessarily do lots of great things. Like we went outside yesterday. That makes it sound like we never go outside, but. I live in a very rainy state, and uh, whereas you can go outside, I'm going to inch inside my brain and it won't go away. All right. Um, I probably won't edit that. You guys need to know how crazy I am. I am a little odd. Oh, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. You're not allowed to say you're crazy when you're seeing a therapist. I think it's stupid. <laughs> I think it's stupid. I mean, you could be crazy and insane, and it could be two totally different things. So in no way do I mean to insult anybody who's crazy or insane. I'm only insulting myself. And actually I don't see myself as insulting myself. I see it a description and that's all it is. Um, it's a sensitivity that I think is that kind of, I have to agree, we seem to be in a world of um, immense amount over sensitivity. But I kind of like it better that way because like I've said in previous videos, I came from a time period when nobody was sensitive about anything, so I, I really have the two and prefer to go that way than this way. Um, let's see. Uh, my channel. This is where I also talk about my channel. Um, though I think it probably would eventually design where I have a, this is what I'm going to do with my channel. So there would be, I think there'd be questions and answers, uh, comments. You know, looking at your comments and then uh, me informing you what's going on and breaking news. So that's four of those kind of things that I like to intervene, possibly once a month, which would then be, I would leave open for my rambling video. So it'd be one rambling video. And then um, every, you know, four videos would be a rambling video. Um, and then there would be uh, the commentary, like maybe the breaking news, and then a commentary on, on books and movies and stuff. Like I'd, I'd show some type of art form and say where I thought, from my personal viewpoint of where how I felt about this and where it came from. Because sometimes people will do a commentary and then they act like it's what all of us see. And, I'm, and I like a lot of things nobody likes. And I buy things that nobody buys. Or somebody bought them and then decided they didn't want it. And 30 years ago got rid of it and I buy it and go ooh. And everybody's like, oh, so ugly. Um, and that's just me. So... As far as my channel goes, I'm kind of chugging along here. Um, blackness, which is going to be, um, I think, more animated than it will be me talk. It'll be me talking, but me talking in an animated storytelling. I've got a couple of short story series coming up. One's called Jerry and Steve Save the World. Um, I have voice actors for that right now. Some friends of mine are going to voice act it. There'll be five episodes of it. And then I think I'm going to open it up as a free form so that anybody who wants to write a story and do an animation can. Or can send me an animation idea about it. A storyline and I'll animate it. Um, the Odyssey, which and I was in a guild. I think I told you guys that. I was in a Renaissance guild, which we also did other kind of plays and stuff but we had created um one called the odyssey um with an emphasis on odd <laughs> that was kind of written by the um guild leader taken from other sources so i'm going to take her source and I'm gonna make it into animation i'm not sure what kind yet and then that's going to be one that's going and then i have tricky monkey on top actually it's not tricky monkey on top that's a book from tricky monkey on top will be a series about a tricky monkey in where he lives but it won't be like that book it was just that's what inspired it was the name tricky monkey 
uh, Long Toes is the name of the character. And that's going to be a kid's one. And then I got a couple of other kid ones I want to animate. I want to um, do some songs and poems that I wrote for my kids when they were small. Um, yes, I'm kind of talented that way. And then um, I downloaded a couple of different free software um, drawing programs to work on my animation skills and then a couple of um i've got a couple of animation programs i'm working on and i'm still trying to learn hit film and so i'm working really hard but there is one thing i want to talk about um really quick though it's not a really quick subject okay so um that's just me being weird um I do that a lot. I just, I get twitchies, witchies, witchies, and I'm kind of sleepy. I haven't, having a sleepy attack, so I kind of really want to go to sleep, so I got the wiggles going on so I can stay awake. I'm having a lot of problem with that. Okay, I have to say this. I got a game capture card, a game capture. It's a device. I got a, it was a cheaper one, so it's an older one, but it's still, they still run, but I cannot get the sound thing on it to work at all, so I have to overlap the sound, which is irritating. So I haven't figured out an easier way to do it. So right now my videos are kind of behind and been messed up. So I'm hoping I'll get that situated too. I don't know. I'm old. Things take a while. And I sleep, get sleepy. Anyway. So. This is a little, another long one. So stay, so one of these days. Excuse me. These will stay at 15 minutes. But I doubt it. You know. And I talk fast. And that doesn't work either. I don't want to talk any faster though. Um. Oh. Brain freeze. Brain freeze. What, oh. Okay, so I want to talk about white privilege. Obviously, I'm pink. You can tell that. I don't like the word white, though I suppose if we think about it, it kind of looks like a white shimmer to me. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Um, anyway, I don't like the word white. I never liked the word white. I haven't liked it since even when I was a kid. I, I'm pink. That's what I say. So if it's a pink privilege, we can go with that. People get really angry about that because they take the word privilege incorrect. Um, I, I think that it shouldn't be privilege, but I'm not quite sure how else they would, they would make that statement. Because to us, to me, privilege means something that you get that only certain people get. So I get it. Now, nah, maybe that does make sense. Anyway, so when I first heard that and learned it, I was really upset because it sounded like I, they were, that I was better than other people because of my pinkness. Golden pink, actually. I'm think I mean, it depends on the sun. Anyway, so I'm sorry. So, and um, it kind of made it's defensive. It's very, very attacking, like. And um. And I never thought that I was racist. I mean, there's that hidden bias that we all have that can be connected to racism. And in my house, there's a lot of, when I was growing up, a lot of hidden and outward racism there was a lot of you can't come home with these kind of people what <laughs> so um that that was kind of an issue but the way that i looked at it was i was watching that show um sensei since eight i don't know if you guys have seen it on netflix and there's a point in which the two are talking the um i want to say she's chinese don't remember anyway so she's standing all of a sudden amidst a whole bunch of african people and the person she's talking to is now standing amidst a whole bunch of chinese people that's kind of how white privilege works you have that sense of wherever you go it is going to be the little pinky golden people that you're going to sit like if i go to the grocery store most of the people that i see there are going to be of some hue color of me um, and that if there is a fight that occurs between me and someone who is of this not of this pinky golden hue color uh, and everyone that works there and everyone who owns the building and everyone that has anything to do with the building and the store and whatever even if they don't think so they will have a more ability especially depending on how loud or outrageous or how the conversation has started, to take the side of me. That's what white privilege means. It doesn't mean that I am doing better. 
than someone else, which I am. I mean, I, I myself are doing way better than most people that I know who are not doing as well, who are of my color and then other colors. And um, I was the type of person, I always used to say I was colorblind, that I didn't see color, but it seemed to piss people off because they wanted us to recognize, wanted me, not everybody, but most people I went to school with and worked with and stuff, wanted me to see their color, wanted me to see their race, wanted me to see their, in, I can't say that word, culture, we'll just go with the culture, and this, and ethnicity, I can't say it, I can hear it in my brain, but can't say it, I know the word, sorry. And, um, so, you know, I see it. It's a physical thing. It's like my, to me, it's like my, I mean, okay, and, and this not to be rude either, but it's like my colored hair, blue. So if I had, if blue was the natural hair color and everybody running around and had blue hair and then there was one guy who had, or I had no, didn't have the blue hair, you might feel a little odd. Um, and yes, as how biases work, that if I'm in the crowd of people like I was this morning, you know, over 500 people, I think, oh, maybe not that many, maybe about two or 300 people showed up to this event, this Easter egg hunt we took Boo Boy to. And as I'm standing there, if all of them had colored hair, I would feel underneath, deep down, this calming sense that we were all on the same wavelength. That's what the privilege part is about. It's that common wavelength of feeling that if all of a sudden you're in trouble, you're more apt to look for a person in a crowd that has some representation of you. And if you're in a crowd where everyone is different from you, but they're all similar in each other, it can be really disheartening and dis, you know, it's like you don't, you don't have a voice. There's no voice for you. And so I, that, to me, is what it means. Now, somebody else is going to argue that's not what it means, and that's fine, but that's how it is for me. That's how I've made sense of it. Um, I think everyone should be treated correctly, and everybody is not the same. So that makes it very difficult for everyone to be t treated, you know, the same. Um, the world isn't very black and white. I wish it was. I see it black and white, but the world isn't very black and white, and I don't mean as in black and white skin tone, I mean as in black and white, right or wrong, good, bad, evil, whatever you want to use that word for, chaos and order, I don't even, you can't, don't even have to use the word black and white, it could be uh, red and green, the world isn't red and green, okay, it isn't this or that, that's the correct word, this or that, it isn't this or that, so, but I see it that way because I have borderline personality disorder and the world for me has to be this or that, there's little fringes of that, and it's crazy thinking, but that's how my brain, when I'm in chaos, that's how it it orders itself. Or when I'm having a huge anxiety attack, that's how it orders itself. It, there are this, and then there's that. And so, um, you know, in the sense of when you're talking about white privilege, there is this, or there is that, you know. Um, and then when you're talking about almost anything in life, there is this. And then there's that. So, that's all I want to talk about. I don't know if any of that made sense. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. You can always um, leave a comment if you want to want me to go into it further. I'm sure because I could make a video about it. It wasn't. One, it's not important to me because I am this and not that. <laughs> if I was that, then it would be more important. I get that. Um, it's important enough that I want to make sure that everyone in my household understands the concept and that um, we have to make sure, oh, I know what I was going to say. We have to make sure that what's fair is that everyone starts the finish line completely ready for the race. If some of us aren't ready for the race, then it's not fair. So we have to make sure that those people are ready for the race. Now that is snowflake thinking. They'll tell you that because it's not very competitive, is it? Anyway, so I'm out of here, and I'll catch you all on the flip side. And have, if you celebrate it, a happy Easter. If you celebrate some other event, or you celebrate only the candy and happy bunny hopping along with it. That's how we celebrate it. Um, and family time, then enjoy that time too. I'm out of here. Peace.